Hello there and welcome to a new video for Age of Wonders 4. In this one I'm going to talk about how to create the best races for each and every culture. Since there's a lot of different playstyles for every culture, it's really hard to find a one-size-fits-all cookie-cutter solution, but there is one thing that you always have the same whenever you pick what your cultures, that that's the baseline roster of units and your baseline skills, and that's where I sank my teeth into for this video and tried to find as many good synergies between this and the baseline roster and skills for each faction. Now, let's get started with the feudals because they are on top of the list. So first off, you are really strong with anything that benefits from your stand together thing. So defensive tactics gives you defenses when you're standing next to a friendly unit. Since you already get 20% damage, for standing right next to a friendly unit for being feudal, this goes really well into the concept. Same goes for overwhelm tactics, because a critical hit chance is really welcome for you, because morale does influence critical hit chance. Feudals are really good at having high morale, so you already have a pretty high critical hit chance, and this just uh, tops things off to get your troops a lot of crits in, and that's really cool, it, it really works well. Another thing on the body trait department is you can't just pick up a dirty cheap plus two resistance for all of your troops. This is the most weak side for your low tier roster. They all lack a little bit of uh, magical resistance. While you can buff it up with your supporters later on, it's a pretty quick banite fix for an obvious problem of this faction. I personally like to use the hearty trait a little bit more than the resistant trait due to the fact that you are really good at buffing the defenses of your troops. Raw HP goes into both directions, but it's really up to you how you want to play that out. These are both pretty good for this faction because reasons. Now, another thing that I want to talk about for the feudals are mounts. You have access to a really strong tier 3 unit, a shock trooper knight. That means you have a pretty powerful offensive unit there at your hands. It synergizes extremely well into unicorn mounts, which allows you to just teleport over obstacles slash defenders to get your shock troopers right into the back line. That's amazing because it basically gives you access to all the dirty supporters and battle mages quite easily with your strongest attacker in your roster. But Honorable mentions also go to the spider mounts and the wolf mounts because this way you can transform your scouts into pretty deadly ranged attackers or point blank AoE spreaders. I personally think that these are not as optimal as the unicorn mounts, but the spider and the wolf mounts give your knights also quite interesting strategical capabilities by giving pack hunter, which makes them even more powerful when they're standing next to each other and you get the idea we already had that topic before so wolf mounts and uh, overwhelm tactics for example makes up for a massive burst on your knights stuff like that is possible nightmare mounts i just want to mention that i didn't find them too good because the intimidating aura is well it's not all play style of this faction Another honorable mention goes to the XP trade adaptable, because your spearmen transform from a tier 1 unit to a tier 2 unit when they are experienced enough. Good stuff, makes it able, makes it ena enables it faster. It all, you also have an, an, a native access to the order affinity, and at the end of the affinity tree for order, you have a massive perk that gives you amazing skills if you have legendary level on your troops so that's a pretty nice synergy as well so that pretty much sums it up i want to give an honorable mention to elusive and ferocious because you have access to stance breakers and retaliation cancelers only in your tier 3 unit and everybody else will trigger a retaliation attack so these two traits go pretty well because you basically won't take as much damage from this little issue of your few of your faction but i personally like other mind traits more but it is a honorable mention in my opinion now then let's head on over to the high faction the what high faction culture? is really really good with that xp trade as well let's cover that uh, first because you have a native bias towards order affinity 
and high level troops go really well with the whole awakened uh, elite unit thing it is not the most powerful but it plays quite well what's more powerful for these guys is heading into a arcane focus because your strongest or your highest tier units are magical damage dealers so you have a natural bias to go there and what plays really well into that is also the keen sighted trait because you have really powerful tier one archers Due to the awakened trait they deal massive amounts of damage and this combination gives you a real nice advantage in ranged combat but this is not all that we can do we have other options as well so you can also go really really well into stuff like status resistance here because your troops are quite balanced on their own you don't need to have access to all these things mount wise i didn't find any bigger advantage there because you have battle mages and they don't utilize these mounts too well in my humble opinion i personally found that in the body trade uh, line the most attractive things were all the things that boosted up the defenses but i personally have fallen in love with the uh, status resistance things because this way you can be really defend you can really defend your troops in each and every direction so let's get on over to the next thing and that's the barbarian faction so your barbarian faction guys are swarmers at heart they have extremely powerful tier one units and therefore the traits of overwhelm tactics and defensive tactics work really really well too but since you are pretty lacking in the defensive department with the barbarians i want to mention the bulwark this is pretty interesting because your defense mode is uh, uh, on quite often with your troops because your shield troops have a stun skill which puts them into defensive mode after. So this triggers quite often. Your front line is composed out of shield units, which are playing a lot in the defense mode, and then they spread ranged. Uh, then they spread defenses again uh, over to your quite vulnerable units. So bulwark was pretty uh, pretty big surprise for me how synergistic it was for the barbarian faction because it is a little bit anti-intuitive. So of course. You, can't, you won't do anything wrong with any damage synergy trait because you know you have a lot of damage up front. Amping that up is a good thing and also going for straight HP was something that I also find quite helpful. Makes your units go down a little bit slower as well. But I want to go for an honorable mention here into the mounts yet again because of the fact that the barbarian faction gains access to mounted units via the scout and that's not that obvious your archer units will gain mounts as well if you have them as a racial thing so once you have spider mounts your archers will sit on these and i personally think that spider mounts are amazing for the barbarian faction because they have pretty much everything that you would like some upfront damage with immobilization which basically can nail down an enemy melee unit so you can dissect those guys even easier your scouts become amazingly powerful with that as well because a scout with a couple of skirmishes are already a army to reckon and there's a lot of cool things behind that i just want to mention that in another thing that goes really really well for the barbarian faction is going for everything that mitigates ranged attacks in general because you are really good at pinning down the frontliners and stunning them and uh, keeping them inca incapacitated but that means the backliners are often to act on you so that's a pretty cool thing to go for with a barbarian faction now let's head on over to the industrious guys so with the industrious guys it's pretty clear that we are playing some defensive stuff we are already aware of that they therefore go again quite well with stuff like defensive tactics overwhelm tactics or bulwark because they everybody who's playing defensive is uh, bunkering up and turtling up a lot and uh, having a buddy system always works a charm i do like a lot the traits of either elusive or ferocious for your guys because with the industrious faction you want to get attacked 
your bolsters your bolstered defenses only activate if your guys get smacked and elusive is quite amazing because this way you can get the most out of being attacked by getting gaining an insane defense bonus whenever the enemy retaliates against you it's it's really a lot plus six is a lot or you just run past an enemy to provoke them to attack you and you have an insane resistances and you most likely will only get one or two damage but trigger again that defensive that that bolstered defenses stack elusive is quite amazing for these guys because it synergizes so damn well into their entire master plan so another thing that I found extremely helpful for this faction was the strong trade because the industrious faction features only physical damage. They have literally no magic damage dealer in their baseline roster and therefore strong is a highly synergistic trade for that faction because everybody in your roster profits from that. They are the only faction that I found that can really utilize this thing completely. Alrighty, so we got that all covered. I also want to talk, of course, that these guys synergize well with any other defensive trade. You cannot do anything wrong with picking up any other defensive trade, be it status resistance or going for any other sort of resistance you find cool. They utilize that pretty well. But I personally found that you also could gain quite a lot with utilizing mounts out of one simple reason you don't necessarily need the other body traits that's a pretty interesting thing because you're already quite you are already quite resistant but your tier 3 units here are shield units therefore you can utilize the mounts a little bit differently i personally found the wolf mounts again pretty amazing because you have your shield units standing in front of the enemy debuffing and powering each other for standing right next to each other so that's a pretty cool option but spiders i think would work quite well also probably the nightmares if you want to go for a morale breaker build i think these should work quite well but since your defenses are already that high you can skip the other body traits in favor of a mount quite well so Let's get on over to the Dark Faction. The Dark Faction is a very, very offensive faction. First off, they offend everybody with their warfaring tactics, but they also have a very, very low amount of defenses on their roster. Therefore, it's really paying off to think about any defensive options, but due to the fact that you're totally lacking any form of support unit, you also have no access to temporal HP generation so fast recuperation or hardy are options that you should consider because since you have no virtual HP to rely on that healing can come in quite handy added into some other st skills or traits I found that a pretty interesting game, uh, thing to go for. I also want to mention of course the wolf mounts for the dark faction because they are just the same as the feudal faction. They have also a highly armored shock unit on their back uh, on their tier 3 unit so for them goes the same but here goes the thing they have a trade to deal more damage against weakened unit units and to gain regeneration on attack against a weakened unit. So the Enfeebling Howl is massive for this faction. You should also consider to use scouts in the early stage of the game if you use wolf mounts to first spread the weakening on the enemy and then utilize your other troops that hit harder with that. It's something to uh, to uh, to think about, especially since nobody synergizes that well with the Enfeebling Howl no other faction slash culture can say that from themselves. They are also really, really good with the nightmare mounts because there is the dark faction or the the dark tomes and dark um, affinity is generally good at morale breaking tactics. But I personally think the wolf mount is unbeatable in this scenario. I just wanted to give a honorable mention to these guys. Another trait to keep an eye on for is the elusive trait, due to two reasons. You have access to a shock unit on tier 1, that means yes, you can avoid retaliation attacks quite a lot, 
but at the end of the road it is very very helpful to be not to get a lower damage in every form of uh, retaliation because you know even if you don't get the retaliation attack the enemy will at some point act on you and opportunity attacks will also get lowered by this of course you can go ferocious and just add up more damage with that which i personally think is also a very very viable option but whatever you do with the dark faction you can or i think you should go for as many defensive options as possible because your most glaring weakness of your culture is that you don't have access to any supporters therefore damage sticks quite long to your armies last point on the list is the mystic faction so with the mystics you have one pretty obvious and glaring defi deficiency you have very very low physical resistances so it's the faction which has the most interest in a flat out physical defense increase because this is your very very lacking department what i also found pretty obvious for these guys was to go for the arcane focus keen eyed uh, keen sighted combo because it's again just like with the high culture the strongest units on your roster are all magic damage dealing ranged attackers and therefore you really profit from this combination a lot i personally think that arcane focus plus a defensive trade is a very very balanced approach so that is pretty um a pretty cool uh, way to go for another thing that i want to mention if you want to go away from that ranged attack thing you go also pretty well with stuff like defensive tactics and bulwarking because you have very cheap tier one units that can be balled together quite well the mystic faction has access to their um, spear troops extremely early the arcane guide is uh, very very early available and the idea behind that would be to swarm the battlefield with these guys that have a pretty nice retaliation ability and focus hard into the retaliation department so go for something like ferocious or elusive and add to that something like bulwarking so they can stand together and um, buff up themselves a little bit uh, more directly although I would more go for something like these here it, the idea behind that is that the mystic faction is not only strong in the range department they also can go quite strong with physical swarming if you want to go for an alternative because the thing about your spear troops is they are really good at retaliating and therefore you can use that and shoot from the back line with your mages and focus a little bit more on the physical side i think this is a strategy that goes quite well for pvp because in pvp everybody would expect from you the uh, pure magic approach that being said the mystical faction is like i said best off with ranged traits physical resists and focusing into magical damage are the most obvious and direct approach. I just meant to think about something else that's not too obvious by going into a more physical build as an option. Okay, so that's been that. I hope you found this video helpful. There's been a lot of theory crafting and the next thing that I'm working on are the society traits. So feel free to leave me your comments, leave me other combos and synergies that I've overlooked because I'm pretty sure I haven't catched them all. And feel free to leave a thumbs up and consider subscribing. I'd be delighted if you did so. And there's a playlist link leading to all the other Age of Wonders videos that I did before. So if you're new to this, I did a lot of other info material that you might want to try out as well. And last but not least, a big, big thanks to all the supporters of the channel. I really, really appreciate what you're doing. And if you want to know what I'm talking about, there's links to Patreon, PayPal, and Buy Me A Coffee leading you to direct support ways for this channel either way thanks so much for watching this video and see you guys next time